That's right. All right, question. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Mm -hmm. I sat my wife, but I told her I can't do it no more. All right. But does she have to sign for the divorce for for me to be? In order for that second marriage, you got a second husband. And your first husband living? Living. You're not a Christian. No. You got a second wife? Mm -hmm. And your first wife still alive? Mm -hmm. You ain't saved. No, you're not, brethren. Repent. You gotta repent for being married to that second wife because your first wife's still living. Go ahead. Brother, brother adulterer. Go ahead. This is the most fascinating encounters of Pastor Genogenes with a married man on his second marriage. This particular man decided to divorce his second wife after Pastor Genogeny showed him the truth in the Bible. Now, the amazing part is that the second married wife continuously declined his request of wanting to divorce her so he could go back to the first wife. Now, watch how Pastor Genogenes handled this particular matter and then also addresses the matter especially to men and women who are a victim to this particular situation. That's right. All right, question. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Mm -hmm. I sat my wife, but I told her I can't do it no more. All right. Said, uh, but does she have to sign for the divorce for... In order for that second marriage to come to an end, it has to be done legally. Yeah. See, when the Bible speaks against divorce, it speaks against divorce when you're really married. Yeah. If she was your first wife, you can't divorce her. Right. But your second wife, she's not yours. You got to get rid of that which is not yours. That's right. And it has to be done legally. legally. You got to go back to the court and get rid of what is, what is not yours no way. Go ahead, man. She don't want to do it. <laughs> Then the Bible says, save who? Yourself. Then save yourself. You got a second husband? Go ahead. And your first husband living? Living. You're not a Christian. No. You got a second wife? Mm -hmm. And your first wife still alive? Mm -hmm. You ain't saved. No, you're not, brethren. Repent. You got to repent for being married to that second wife because your first wife's still living. Go ahead. Brother, brother adulterer. Go ahead. Eh? Go ahead. You got to repent, repent for having that woman's husband. Yeah. Because you know that woman, that woman is still living. And the first wife of that man is still living. And you, that man's second wife. Yeah. You ain't nothing but a spare tire. That's right. You're just a spare tire. Yeah. And I'm here to take your hair out. I don't care if you're a pastor of a church. Preach it, brother. You got more than one wife? Yeah. You're a disgrace. Even God got one wife. That's right. I want to say, God got one wife. It's called the church. The church is the bride. That's right. He only got one. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see the rule of marriage now. Romans chapter 7 and we're at verse 1. All right. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. I speak to them that know the law. Now that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. Wait a minute. How long does the law have power over that man? Hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. What? For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband. How long? So long as he liveth. Then what? But if the husband be dead. If the husband be in prison. If the husband be dead. No, went blind. But if the husband be dead. Got a bad back. If the husband be dead. He drank. But if the husband be dead. No, dying. But if the husband be dead. What got to happen to him? If the husband be dead, she is loose. From the law of her husband. He, if, if he's what? But if the husband be dead. Then what? She is loosed from the law of her husband. And so then if. If. Get this now. So yeah. then if. If. While the husband liveth. While your husband is alive. She be married to another man. And you are man. married to another man. What did the Bible call her? She shall be called an adulteress. But she's shouting. An adulteress. She's speaking in tongues. She shall be called an adulteress. She's on the choir. An adulteress. She's a pastor's daughter. An adulteress. Your mama. An adulteress. Your wife. An adulteress. Your grandma. An adulteress. Your sister. An adulteress. The usher. An adulteress. 
and adulterous. While Billy is still living. That's right. Uh huh. She sh she be married to another man. And yet you married to Melvin. She shall be called an adulteress. Well, Pastor Dennis, he beat me. Then the Bible justifies separation. That's right. Because the Lord said he hate divorce. In yeah. order for that second marriage to come to an end, it has to be done legally. Yeah. See, when the Bible speak against divorce, it speak against divorce when you're really married. Yeah. If she was your first wife, you can't divorce her. Right. But your second wife, she's not yours. You got to get rid of that which is not yours. Right. And it has to be done legally. legally. You got to go back to the court and get rid of what is, what is not yours no way. If your husband dies, getting married again is up to you. So you're free now. You're free. You ain't bound because he's dead and you're free. If you get married again, that's totally up to you. But you can't give your body to nobody. First Corinthians. Marriage today has become one of the most complicated institutions we do have today in the world when you look into the islamic community or into the islamic circles of marriage marriage is very complicated there if you go into the world marriage has become one of the most complicated institutions we do have today in the world when you come also into the christian circles into the Christian communities. Marriage has become one of the most complicated institutions we do have today in the Christian community. In fact, marriage has become one of the satanic weapon that many people uses to mock the validation of today's Christianity or the validation of modern Christianity. Many people do not trust Christian Christianity or the Bible principles again because of the Christian marriages. We have mega pastors who have failed in their marriages. We have bishops, we have apostles, we have prophets, we have evangelists, great, great ministers of the gospel, men that have made impact in the Christian circles who many people looks up today as a mentor people looks up today as fathers of faith as the patriots of faith that have failed in their marriages some of them are in their second marriages others are in their third marriages and even others within their fourth marriages marriage is the reason why many people mock christianity today Many people do not even have faith in a Christian lady that she will make a good wife. Many people do not even have faith in a Christian man that he will make a good husband. Marriage has become one of the satanic weapon where Christianity is being degraded, being mocked, and being laughed at. And so, when you study and compare scriptures to the stance of Pastor Genogenes when it comes about divorce, I see nothing wrong with the stance of Pastor Genogenes. Now, he is a minister that preaches the complete gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is a minister who will preach a gospel that is not diluted, a gospel that is not contaminated. A gospel that is not compromised under any circumstances. He preaches the word of God just as it is. And because of that, many people don't really want to listen to him when it comes about marriage. There are many Christians today who knows the stance of the Bible when it comes about marriage. When it comes about divorce, when it comes about a cheating wife and a cheating husband, when it comes about a nagging wife and a beating husband, they know the stance of the Bible, yet they continuously ignore the stance of the Bible and they do as their hearts or their character will have them do. 
and then afterwards claim to say they are lovers of God or they are followers of Christ. And so the Christian marriage today is very complicated. There is no hope that when two couples who are godly and God-fearing are coming together to be emerged as a wife and a husband, there is no hope that the marriage would even last. There is no hope that the marriage will be a beautiful one. There is no hope that the marriage is on a right course. And so when you look into the Christian circles today, marriages even alone discourage believers. Marriage can even make a Christian feel that many Christians today don't even know God. And so Pastor Gino Genis is on, on the right track that as a Christian brother or a man, the Bible stands is plain and clear that the only way you are permitted to divorce your wife is when she cheated on you or the only way you are permitted to remarry again is when either your husband or your wife is no more. Then the Bible gives you permission to marry again. But the Christian marriages we have today, people are not divorcing either their husbands or their wives on the level of cheating or on the level of absence by death. People choose to do or to divorce their wives just because of petty, petty reasons, just because of petty, petty things that the Bible is not in support of. And so the Christian circles today or within the Christian circles today, marriages are not a guarantee or marriages cannot be guaranteed that it will last long and so that's why when you listen to what pastor Gino Genesis is saying you have to come in agreement with what pastor Gino Genesis had to say because when you study the bible clearly it is opened and plain that only on one occasion only on one level of opportunity is a man giving the chance or a woman giving the chance to divorce or to remarry again that is when you cheat you can divorce when your husband or your wife is dead you can remarry again but we see people doing other things when even their partners are alive when even their husbands or even their wife has done anything that guarantees that the wife is supposed to be divorced. In all together, what we want to say is very simple. Pastor Dinogenes is standing on biblically what the Bible approves about when it comes or when it has to do with marriage. And in that way, I believe that scripture is plain and clear. Once you are a Christian or once you'd portray yourself to be a follower of Christ. You should be able to obey the Bible. You should be able to do things as the Bible has already prescribed. Now, any other person that goes against scripture, any other person that goes against what the Bible has to say, any other person that goes against what the Bible stands when it comes about marriage is definitely not a Christian. That is why in today's time, we have to continuously enforce what the Bible has to say about marriage, what the Bible has to say about marriage, and follow exactly what the Bible is saying, and follow exactly what the Bible is saying. Now, if you look at things clearly, today's marriage is something that may, you see, those that are already in marriage, are looking for ways and means to get out of marriage. Those that are not in marriage at the moment are also looking for ways and means to also get into marriage. 
the point is that people, many people have different views and opinions about marriage. Some people want to get married, especially some of the ladies, they want to get married because of their age, not because they want to become a wife, not because they know what it takes to respect a man or to be obedient to a man. They cannot even be submissive to a man. They just want the idea or the picture where people can see them as married wives. Or the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ for standing solidly behind scriptures and doing things accordingly as scripture has pre prescribed and has ordered them to go about. 